Hornady, critical defense, 38 special plus P versus 22 Magnum. So our 38 special is a 110 grain plus P. Our 22 Magnum is a 45 grain. So this is an interesting test I've been wanting to do for a while. Now a lot of people ask me all the time, what's the best 38 special round? And I'm going to say it every single time. It's going to be the critical defense, 110 grain plus P. I'm not a huge fan of Hornady ammo, but this round I've tested more than any other round and it always performs no matter the barrel length no matter the time of year it usually does pretty well so we're going to compare that to the critical defense in 22 magnum so we're doing three inch barrel revolvers today our three inch uh, barrel Ruger LCRX in 22 mag and our three inch barrel Taurus 605 and 38 special plus P so we'll see what we get for ballistic performance so i am going to go through the chronograph see what kind of velocity and accuracy i get at the same time then i'm going to do my 10 percent clear ballistic test so i'm just going to go into 10 percent you know clear ballistic gel a lot of people ask me this a lot what temperature do you keep your gel assuming this is organic gel this is synthetic clear ballistics the inside of the block is probably 65 degrees but that doesn't matter so we're going to go into our our 10 percent clear ballistics and see what we get and then after after i go through a plain clear ballistic shot which would can be considered a best case scenario i'm going to put in a quarter inch medium density fiber board after three inches of clear ballistics to represent hitting a pectoral muscle reason why three inches is because this is roughly half as dense as flesh so it's like a inch and a half of flesh and in front of that four layers of denim and then i'm going to shoot from a little distance i'm probably going to shoot from i'm going to try 25 yards today because they're three inch barrels and just kind of see what kind of practical accuracy i get with these so let's get started with this test all right first up we have our 38 special plus p is rated at 1090 feet per second from a four inch barrel so let's see what we get with our three inch barrel here about uh, five yards from the target Ten eleven. Ten thirty. Ten fifty one. Ten forty eight. And ten forty seven. That's respectable velocity. So our twenty two magnum here. It is rated at one thousand feet per second from a one and seven eighths inch barrel. Let's see what we get with our three inch barrel here. 1272. 1216. 1230. No read. No read again. 1250. So I'll take those numbers. That's pretty respectable velocity for a 22 Magnum out of a short barrel. These are nickel plated, so ejection is excellent with these. You stick in because the ejector's not very long, but it's not actually stuck. It's just sitting there. So I would say overall, that's pretty nice for a handgun round to have smooth ejection like that and really high velocity. So let's hit our ballistics gel block with both of these and see what we get. All right, let's just go through our plain clear ballistics. No denim, no MDF. See what our best case scenario is. So here is our 38 special. All right, let's try our 22 mag. See how that compares. Go take a look. All right, interesting here. Our uh, penetration was higher with our 22 Magnum, which kind of doesn't surprise me, but we definitely got some expansion with both of these. With our 38 Special, we had a penetration of about 11 and a half inches, which is definitely a little bit below our standard that we want of 12 inches. And the, the reason why 12 inches is a number is because we're calculating in possibly through the side shot, like through an arm. It's gotta have enough uh, power to get through all that mass. So that's why we want 12 inches. But when we look at something like 11 and a half inches, that's perfectly acceptable for our front on shot to get enough penetration because you're probably looking at maybe five six inches that we want in a human body so that'll do it now with our 22 magnum we actually got very ideal we got 14 inches of penetration 
which is definitely what we want to see because that's going to ensure pretty good uh, penetration. However, 22 Magnums have very little mass and they kind of might possibly interact differently with, you know, rib simulation. So let's put a rib simulation in there and our denim and just go for our real world test here and see what we get. All right, more of our real world scenario here. 58 Special, let's see what we got with this. Our 22 mag now. All right, 22 mag through our denim and MDF. See how it does. Let's go take a look. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, what we got is a, you know, pretty similar between the two of these, despite there being, you know, a good difference in energy there. Uh, but what we're looking at here, we got good damage right here through our MDF. And I'll pull this out just to show this. And it looks like potentially as soon as we got to this MDF, the 38 Special was already starting to tumble just a little bit because it wasn't expanding with that denim and it kind of makes the front of the bullet a little bit off-centered so we got good damage there and we got an ideal penetration of 15 15 and a quarter inches something like that but we didn't get one time 1.5 times expansion by any means with our 22 mag well it looks like it happened is it went right through that which doesn't surprise me through that first three inches and done because it's going so fast and after that once it got into here tumbled made a huge amount of damage penetrated about 15 and three quarter inches no expansion, but that really doesn't matter because we got damage, we got adequate penetration. So what we're seeing here is that our 22 mag, it's actually beating the 38 special to some res in some respects here because it's got higher penetration with both and but not over penetration. So that's really good. Now let me shoot from 25 yards, see how these pair for practical accuracy. And before I start shooting that steel, one thing about 22 mag is that generally the defensive ammo boxes are not only 50% cheaper at the beginning, but instead of 20 to 25 rounds, you get 50 rounds. So that allows you to do some practice you might not normally be able to do with larger center fire ammunition when you're talking about your defensive loads. So, critical defense, seven yards. I'm gonna point this out, see what I can get on target. So let's see what I can do. Right, I was definitely shooting a little bit to the um, to the right. And I think that just is all me because I'm not fully accustomed to this gun yet, and it's natural point. So if I get a natural you know, sight picture and do it, rather than drawing it, let's see if there's a difference. It's not a great grouping, but I am firing fast from seven yards. You can't really expect much more doing it that fast. So let me do this as fast as I can pull the trigger. Let's see what happens. Here we go. <laughs> I have no idea if I hit because it's all bouncing around. I can't really see impacts, but what we're seeing there is, you know, you can fire a little bit faster. And center fire because if you guys have seen me fire center fire before, it's not quite that fast. All right, I found my 25 yard marker, so we're gonna see what we get from 25 yards with these. So I'm gonna aim center mass with the 38 special, do some slow fire double action, and just see where they hit for me. All right, like every other ammo, it's tending to group a little bit left for me with this particular revolver. Let's try our 22 Magnum, see how this does.
right, so I was aiming center mass, and I was definitely getting some impacts that were a lot higher than where I was aiming. So I'm gonna load this back up. I'm gonna try for some headshots, knowing what I know about where these impact, and we'll just see what I can do. All right, I'm gonna do three double action, three single action. So looks like the elevation's right, but we're over about maybe eight inches, so. I'm going to aim as if there's a headshot, you know, target just to the right of this. So let me try double action first, and then I'll switch on the single action. So aiming over about eight inches to the right. Single action. So, get a little bit better double action than single action. So with this, this is going to be a challenge. This is like some of them hit kind of center. Some of them hit like about a foot high. So, I don't know. Well, let me just aim right on center of the headshot target there and see if I can get a hit. As I suspected, pretty high. So I'm going to aim maybe about here on that silhouette, but center. Let's see what happens. All right, let me do a couple of single action. All right, not bad. Now, because I got some extra rounds for fun, I'm going to go back to 75 yards. I always like to have fun like that. You know, it gives me a little bit of delay with slow rounds that I can fire and hear the shot. I always find that kind of fun. So let me try 75 yards. I'll race 75 yards from the target. <laughs> with this, I'm going to aim, you know, the same elevation, but I'm going to aim over probably a full silhouette over. So probably 18 inches I'm going to aim over to the right. So let's see if I can make any hits doing that. Just a little bit too much to the right, so maybe I'm just gonna aim about six inches off the target to the right. All right, the elevation changed a little bit here and there as I did that. So now what I want to do here, my hope is with this, they'll kind of even out. They'll, you know, we were getting kind of too high at 25. And maybe they'll start to come back down and be accurate at 75. So I'm going to aim center mass 75 yards. See what I get. All right, so I think I aimed a little bit high one time and I went over potentially. So I think these actually are hitting about point of impact, aim and impact at that distance. So I just have to focus a little more. This trigger is not nearly as smooth as pretty much most uh, center fire revolvers. So it's a little bit of a challenge. If I go single action, I won't be gripping it tight enough. So, <laughs> I'll just keep going double action, see what I can get. So that time I was kind of all over the place, not doing particularly well. Not exactly sure where they're hitting at this point, to be honest, because I can't really see the impacts on steel. I can't see the impacts in dirt the way I could with the 38 Special. But 
This back here is just for fun. We saw that at uh, a little bit closer range, they grouped pretty well and they shot high. But our main thing here is looking at our ballistic performance because this is typically gonna be a seven yard gun. So from seven yards, um, yeah, this is gonna be a pretty good revolver here um, because we're going to get good ballistic performance and we're going to get good follow-up shots. And that's kind of important. So I honestly think that, you know, this is a pretty good choice because it really did rival that 38 Special. Now, can we really look at the ballistics gel and be like, you know what, this penetrated better, this expanded just as well. Therefore, overall, it's going to be as good as the 38 Special. I'm not 100% sure on that because in the real world, you know, momentum makes a difference in how that performs in a human body. And there may be other factors that might come into play. So I can't necessarily verify that gel equals real world. But what I can say is 22 mag, I think has come a long ways compared to a few years ago by making rounds that are specifically designed for handguns. So that's what you get today. You can draw your own conclusions on what you think about all this. So that's what you get. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching. Thank you.